Hey, Sense fans, welcome to the Sense Centennial. On today's show, we're going to discuss the Ottawa Senators and their future at LeBreton Flats. And this is a very exciting announcement. In case you missed it, the Ottawa Senators recently announced the signing of a memorandum of understanding with the National Capital Commission, the NCC, to develop an arena near Ottawa's downtown core at LeBreton Flats. So this is a huge relief for many Sens fans. I'm sure you watching are very excited uh, as the previous negotiations between the Ottawa Senators and the NCC fell flat back in 2017 when Eugene Melnick and John Ruddy had a falling out, which resulted in lawsuits being filed against one another. And it was it was not pretty. So that ultimately led to the abandoning of the project. And of course, this was extremely disappointing to Sens fans and the city itself that it would be great to have a central hub for sports uh, in, in the region. So there's still a chance that the negotiations could not get past this initial phase. However, this announcement has brought a lot of excitement to the fan base, and rightfully so. It would breathe new life into not just Sens fans, but the city of Ottawa in general. So, Ben, and I'll let you chime in first. What do you think about the announcement of the Sens and heading to LeBreton Flats? Yeah, I think this is just such an unmitigated win for the team and for the city and for fans. I mean, this is just, it's just, it's so great to finally see some progress on this this has been sort of like the the pie in the sky every sense fans you know hope of oh one day you know maybe when we're at LeBreton, we'll be able to do whatever or this or that and so it's great it's great to see it i think the proposal what i've seen of seen of it i love the idea of how they visualize space you know i love the idea that it's based on transit and not you know just like uh gridlock like the current uh like the current arena is uh, and i say this is someone who lives in canada i live in the west end i walk to the games that i go to and you know i i understand that like i and people like me are like in theory like the like the losers quote unquote of this but like i cannot bring myself to be anything but delighted to see you know, the prospect of the Sens playing in a downtown arena, like every serious team in this league has a downtown arena that's easily accessible, that is a destination, not just for the 60 minutes of the game, but for before and for after. Uh, it's going to make a huge difference to, you know, just like the vibe at the games and, you know, like the financial situation of the team. It's going to be way easier to sell tickets. And uh, there's other stuff that I want to talk about, about Gary Bettman and the NHL and what they may have had to, what role they may have had in this, but I want to turn over the other map first. Yeah, I, uh, I too am a fellow Canada liver. I live in Bridalwood and uh, I'm live. so happy about this. <laughs> like it's, uh, it's monumental. It's a great day to be a Sens fan. It's a great day uh, for, for hockey and, and sports in Ottawa. Um, they, they have some pretty heavy hitters when it comes to those backing the project. But I mean, ultimately for me, I think it brings a lot more credibility to the team. Uh, you know, this comes on the heels of the day uh, the, the social media, uh, you know, outpouring about Philip Forsberg being in Ottawa and he was downtown you know, he got to see downtown and he was like, wow, this is actually like, like really nice. And like, imagine, you know, all he has to do is drive uh, 10 minutes with the, the team bus as opposed to 35 minutes for wherever they're going and they get to experience what Ottawa is. Um and just seeing the excitement about this on uh, on Twitter and and all the various social media, it's um, it's it's pretty exciting, and and I'm I'm really stoked about it. Yeah, and you mentioned some of the big partners that they have, and I mean they have four major ones that are are backing the Sens proposal and are likely proponents of of why the Sens got selected as the preferred bid, aside from obviously having the Ottawa Senators uh, under their or up their sleeve, I guess. Uh, so they have Sterling Project Development and their real estate company. They were recently part of the team that was involved in building UBS Arena, where the New York Islanders currently play out of. Uh, so they're alone, uh, quite a, a huge company. And then you get Populous, who is a design firm. And they've designed the Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle, home of the Seattle Kraken. Um, they've designed the Videotron Center in Quebec City, T-Mobile Arena in Vegas, where the Golden Knights play out of, and Tottenham, Tottenham Spur, Hotspur Arena in London, England. Man, 
I'm I'm so bad at saying that one. Bennett knew he was going to make fun <laughs> of me for it. Tottenham. Uh, Tottenham. Uh, and then go. uh, we got uh, the third uh, company was Tipping Point Sports. Uh, so they're a sports finance advisory firm, and they focus on mixed use developments that are centered around like a sports project, essentially. And then there's Live Nation, which is an entertainment company, and they help produce concerts and other music festivals and events. So some big players in there, like I said, probably helped uh, get the sense, the preferred bid. And yeah. Yeah. I, and what I'll say about that is, I mean, you see the uh, you see the the partners that are involved in this bid. And I obviously I don't know any more than any of the rest of us do. But from my, you know, in my uh, in my judgment, you see the NHL's fingerprints all over this proposal in terms of they're going back to the well with uh, with, uh, you know, like stakeholders who have helped them develop other like recently built arenas. Like probably the three most recently built arenas are probably the Islanders, the Kraken and Vegas. Right. Uh, so, you know, they're going they're, they're going with a trusted partner there. Uh, and if that if it wasn't on the NHL's advice, it was certainly with the NHL's like encouragement. I would imagine that this happened, you know, to help strengthen this bid and make it real and kind of help it bring it to fruition, you know, because these are successful projects that are and redevelopments that have happened. And uh, I just want to highlight a quote. Uh, I mean, it's not a quote per se, but just in uh, in uh, Gary Ock's piece in the Sun, uh, which I hate uh, referring people to, but you know, has to be done. Um, you know, mentioned uh, the fact that. Jim Watson had been in contact with NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman, who had emphasized how important it was for the team to have a downtown arena. I mean, you've got the commissioner of the league calling up our mayor to say, get this done. I mean, that that tells you everything that you need to know about the what's going into this proposal and how serious it is. I mean, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, that, you know, the NHL wants this team in Ottawa and they want it to succeed in Ottawa and they want it to be downtown. And we've known that for years. Yeah. That's been clear from statements and from everything. Uh, and, you know, the, the NHL, I'm sure, had at least a hand, you know, in helping put this proposal together. And, you know, I'm sure that they had the full backing of the league in getting this done as quickly and as, you know, efficiently as possible What's funny to me is that the nhl might look at ottawa as an untapped market untapped potential literally literally because it's all been canada and yeah. you know you have people and i saw on on twitter people a little upset about the fact that you know they're out of town they come in the drive is easier but you don't have the downtown uh walking traffic and all of that yeah. Uh, I, I, I believe I've said this on the podcast before, but, um, there has been a, there, there was a tweet that basically said like this guy who lives in Toronto, he's a Sens fan walked by, uh, Rogers arena. And, you know, he just went, saw if there were tickets, saw the price and just went to a game. Like mm -hmm. that's insane. You can't do that with yeah. <laughs> with the the CTC you you have to drive to it and then you got to <laughs> walk a mile to get to the actual facility yeah. and then you have the scalpers and all that but yeah the walking traffic all of that will make Ottawa an even more legitimate um location and I'm I'm really intrigued to see how big this arena is going to be yeah. so it's going to be exciting I I don't uh, know if what it was about sorry I, yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know if it was confirmed, but I did see somewhere that it was posted that it was expected to have like 22,000, which I think for a downtown arena. I think that was Sean Simpson. Yeah, was I read Simpson? the same thing. So but... yeah, I don't I don't know if it that's an accurate number. That seems quite high. I think that would be like one of the largest arenas in the in the NHL if that were an accurate number. Um, but Sean Simpson, I know sometimes says things to, to gain some traction. Uh, he did say, I believe in the same tweet that it's going to have a retractable roof. Okay. So then he was totally trolling us. Yeah. But, it was, uh, <laughs> he said it had a retractable roof for like concerts and stuff, but I mean, right. who knows? Maybe that's a possibility. That, that would be hilarious. But, uh, but yeah, I do want to want to point out the fact that, uh, you know, I did work for a sustainability um, company before my current job. And I did a lot of research on this climate pledge arena and the things they are doing there are exceptional. 
And uh, if they can integrate 50% of what they're doing there into this downtown arena, we become one of the most green, sustainable teams in the league. And that yeah. is something to be proud of. That'd yeah, I huge. think I think the no surface parking is a big deal too, because yeah. for example, when you go to Lansdowne for a Red Blacks game, I love that you just walk up, there's restaurants around, you can get into the atmosphere of the game just because like it's, yeah. it's a total, totally walkable area. And they kind of shut down traffic or at least limit it and restrict it. And so it feels a lot more enjoyable. And, you know, I was out in Seattle when I went and saw the Seahawks play at CenturyLink before they changed their name. And again, it was extremely walkable. After the game, you're walking through downtown. Like my dad and I literally went to the game. And then after the game, we're walking downtown. We're like, yo, let's go hit up a restaurant, grab some food, grab a bite to eat after the game. So mm-hmm. it's like, it, it just, that's it'll so be, cool. Yeah. It'll yeah. be so much better being downtown where after the game, you're like, yo, you know, sense might've lost or whatever. Like, let's go have a drink and just like, whatever talk talk about whatever or you know the sends have a huge win and you go and you just celebrate at a bar like it's it's just it'll be a lot more fun for sense fans and i think it's something to really look forward to and of course like you said the the sustainability factor will be really nice and i like that they want to have like a green roof and stuff because that'll be cool too yeah absolutely cool well, I think that kind of sums it up. I mean, like, I think we're all pretty pumped and we wanted to uh, to get together and chat about this. So uh, thanks everyone who's, who's watched the video. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if you want to find our other content, um, we just recently released a podcast episode uh, talking about Alfie's uh, hopes to get into the Hockey Hall of Fame and what our opinions are on that. Uh, Bennett recounts a, a nice little... Uh, I guess run in with Pierre Dorian that he had at a sandwich shop. So that was a fun story. Uh, so yeah, you can check that video out on our channel on YouTube at the Centennial podcast, and you can find us on Twitter and our other social media platforms at Centennial. Uh, thank you so much for the same day. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you next episode. Go Sens go. And are going go, down. Go.